So we've had a just water line. It's unfiltered water coming from our well and it comes through from the house, but it bypasses the water filter. So the sprinkler irrigation, watering the cows, washing out cars, allows us to use water without having to kill our home house filter and plug it up, which it does if you've run a lot of water through. So the kicker is, is it's just a hose coming out of the ground. So we've had to drain it every winter and prevent it from freezing and busting. So now we're hoping to dig down and we bought a Woodford Y34 six foot deep berry um, frost hydrant to put in. And it's made right in Iowa. Those things are pretty awesome. We use them at the barn project and we've used them for a couple winters and they work great. So we got the project of digging down, hopefully not fully six feet down and teeing into this line and putting in a frost hydrant right here. And we're gonna probably put a cement slab below it so we can stand washing up fruits or vegetables or whatever we want to do. And mama wants a sink. And mom wants a sink. So that's gonna be the next big project is digging down and uh, debated going and borrowing a backhoe, but we'll see how far I make it with the shovel here. Maybe I'll get burned out and we'll have backhoe here shortly. So all these Woodford hydrants all have the standard uh, three quarter inch threaded amputee threads on the bottom. So all I'm doing is teeing to the one inch water line and that's what we got to set up and get installed before we drop down the hole and do the next portion. So the biggest thing is, is you don't have to use the yellow type pipe thread. And the reason I have chose to go with yellow is I use this stuff for my tractors, hydraulics, and everything else. So, the fact that I just needed this little bit of it, and you'll see how little, I mean, literally, haha, <laughs> got to love windy days. So the biggest thing is getting it set up so when you end, it's actually getting pulled into the threads when you go to thread it in. So you actually wanna play around a couple times to make sure you thread in the right direction. More than around. So, so we got the pipe tape on, and on top of it, hey, Help this is me. wet. Do not touch. Help you. I've never seen the grave before. That is new. Help you. Help you. Help you. Help you. Yeah, hold on a bit. <laughs> the whole point of the reason of going overkill is with water lines, you never have to want to dig them back up again. So. Wear it on all possible. Use brass or stainless. Try not to use any plastic fittings. So now we got dope on it. Tape. Now we can thread it in. We're just finishing threading in. So, like we talked about earlier, we're over killing everything. It's got tape and compound. And the whole point of this is once we install this, we do not want to have to touch this again for years. And if you just use tape or compound, you can have a leak. But with overkill, the odds of having to touch your skin is pretty low. So what I'm trying to do, is I know I have the water line coming away from the house and I want this to pick it away, as I get this tightened in, I want this bar fitting going 180 degrees opposite. I think I get enough threads to make it one more revolution. Hopefully. Don't do it, I'm gonna do it. No, I'm gonna do it with my oh. You're gonna help me? Grab on. No, that wrench has to stay there. That's what's holding it, Roger. So the whole, yep, you guys hold right onto that. <laughs> Watch out, buddy. All right. He's back. That is about there. Awesome. So, you got it taped, doped, and done. So now we get to go in the hole, cut off the water line, zing two stainless steel. So what we're going to do next is basically make a drywall for the frosty hydrant to drain to to keep it from freezing. So usually if it's out and away from a well that I'm not worried about, we've always used hydraulic buckets, but where it's right next to the well that we drink from, we scratch around and got some clean buckets and a lid that's not oil contaminated and is clean. And that's what we're going to use to make the drywall. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna notch the base of the bucket so the incoming water pipe can come into it and we're gonna notch the hole in the lid so it can go, the shaft of the frosty hydrant come down in and then when we get it all together in the drywall, the set up, we'll fill it with rocks and there'll be a lid on it. And that'll give an area where there's no sand, just rocks and plenty of room for the water to drain. And we'll also nick it and put a couple drainage slots in it. And it's gonna be surrounded by sand, which also should help it drain. But the big component is get the water out as fast as possible when it's 40 below so the hydrant up top doesn't freeze. So pick a corner. You need about at least an inch and a half to two inch sand. centered to give it, it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just making sure this lid fits since I just pulled it off in a different style bucket, looks like it will. So I'm going to do something similar. I'll show you why in a minute Roger, that's right where the water line that we dug out is going to go buddy. So Alright, step back, back again because daddy's going to use the grinder. Go cover your ears. All right, Daddy's back using the grinder. Again. Back up. Shinsia's broken grinder set up with one of those, and I just never take it off. <laughs> so let's go get it installed. All right, ready? Whew. Awesome, Roger. Bring them right on over. Okay, I will. I found some. Looks like a nice raw pile here. I just found some rock in the middle of the driveway. Nice. Can we make a good pile right there? Oh, that's awesome. I got some raw. Nice. You think you can find more? We're not going to put them in yet. I'll let you know when we can put them in. Why don't you get another pile? We'll put it right here. All right? Put the bucket and the lid onto it. I'm just gonna get set up and drop down the work in the hole. Where did I put the rock? I put the rock in that bucket in a minute. We're gonna do it down that hole after Daddy cuts off and gets fittings on and everything else. Everything's in the name of overkill and never have to touch it again. So we're gonna heat up that poly pipe and we're gonna put two hose clamps on. And we shouldn't have to ever mess with this again for a long time. I'm just backing them off so there's plenty of room. Ready to set up. And this one. I think I might have to do a little digging to make sure that bucket fits in there. So that should work pretty good. I'm gonna hop down the hole. See how things are. See if I can work in there. Oh. 
So we got the water line cut off, and the next step is, is well, you can watch what I'm gonna do in the next portion. Then we're gonna go ahead and slide the two hose clamps on. I'll dig them out of the mud in a bit. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take a butane torch. I'm gonna warm up that poly pipe. And with it warm, it will slide right in the barbs. And if I get the impact onto those uh, pipe clamps while it's still warm, it will mold right onto it and do a super tight watertight seal. The kicker is, is this hole being dug by hand is just big enough for me to work in. So we're gonna set up the camera off to the side so you guys can follow along, but you're just not gonna be able to see the torch sliding it onto the pipe and getting those pipe clamps tightened down. So we'll, you'll be able to follow along the best you can from wherever we set you up. So. All right, that cone's gonna come down through. Hang on a second until I get repositioned. See the side of those buckets right up the top. Nice. And we get just about yay. And then we'll have the fun of, oh shit. What? All right, let's grab that end of that blue pipe there. That blue pipe, just set this down. Just put that on the ground. Grab that end of that blue pipe and bring it over here. This isn't standard poly pipe, it's a different size, and I don't think that fits. So I'm gonna have to get a different fitting. Oh, shit. All right. I know it takes a lot of work, but by hand is better because it doesn't leave such a huge gaping hole. I want to grab that torch over there and that, imp that yeah. impact driver. Ugh. Ugh. All right, so you have it just running, do you? Yep. Perfect. So I'm going to heat it. You want to go ahead and stand it up roughly near the hole? I'm just trying to see how hard it's going to be able to do. I should be able to shove like that and go. Alright. Let me get the water drained out of it a little bit. That won't heat. There's water in it. Alright. Let me heat it again. Ooh, hot in here. Almost. I don't know why your shoes on fire. Okay, close. Make sure it's all the way in. Because I'm gonna get it. Do not twist that. Okay, sorry. No, I'm just saying, not saying that for dramatic effect. That's tight. I don't want to break it all. That's definitely tight. Alright. One more hose clamp was down here. Well, let's see if I can get that. Can you tip that. lift up gently? Lift up. There it is. Alright. Oops. I think the idea is for them to go in the bucket. 
We're supposed to actually be doing this while I hold the pipe, but. Oh, alright. Want to hold the pipe? Yes. Yep, let's go ahead and throw them right in there on top of the bucket. Nice. Awesome. The wood slot I put in is not off the side. So I gotta slit it. Sand out of it so it doesn't fill right up all the shit. So. Backfill. It's not pretty, but it works. Nice.
right, let's do the trial run. Woohoo! We have water. Oh, that there will flow. And then this is designed so you can just set it at whatever you want to turn on that. You can back it down. And then more wide open. And then we close it. And it all drains down that bucket we installed down there. And it shouldn't freeze. Pretty cool. And then we'll put a T or a Y I should say off the yep. spigot. And we'll be able to run irrigation lines, plumb a sink eventually, etc.